look! Three rockets with little to no detail about them. Wonderful! And, and no, not that Astra. Today we're going to talk about the Pack Astro, Whitting Hill, and Astra launch vehicles. Pack Astro was founded in 1990 for the sole purpose of developing a scout class low cost launch vehicle to support the growing market of small satellite payloads. Get ready to hear about that one a lot. Their design approach, much like we see in these cases, focused on a minimum cost design launch vehicle. This resulted in a two-stage pressure-fed rocket using LOX RP-1 as propellant, capable of launching 225 kilograms to a 750 kilometer sun-synchronous orbit, or the same to a 1200 kilometer equatorial orbit, for the low price of $5 million. Each stage would use the same propellant and pressurization systems. Plus, the engines would be derived from the TRW pintle injector pressure-fed designs like the TR-201. Tanks would be made from aluminum and be one centimeter thick, sacrificing weight for low costs and understood materials. Stage 1 would carry 16,250 kilograms of propellant and weigh 18,570 kilograms wet. The single engine would have 697,000 pounds of thrust and operate at 246.6 psi. The vacuum ISP would be about 200... 79 seconds. Stage 2 carries 5,120 kilograms of propellant and weighs 5,740 kilograms wet, including the 225 kilogram payload. The engine has 8,543 pounds of thrust, operating at 126.7 psi chamber pressure, and has a vacuum specific impulse of 323 seconds. Also on stage 2 are six sets of helium thrusters for roll control during the first and second stage flight, as well as trimming the orientation of the second stage. Pack Astro's 1.6 meter outer diameter allowed for a very large payload fairing at 3.25 cubic meters, greater than equivalently sized launch vehicles. The goal was to do rideshare missions, not unlike what Rocket Lab and SpaceX do today. Swedish Space Corporation's S-Range launch site would be where the rocket would launch from. Emphasis was placed on a simplified ground support infrastructure. The company, working with its subsidiary Aero Astro to make small satellites, did begin work on their PA-1 suborbital sounding rocket in 1996. This involved development and test firings of the PAE engine, which operated at 150 psi and produced 12,000 pounds of thrust. Up to 70 firings were done, including one that lasted up to 60 seconds in September 1997. Plans were made to double the chamber pressure and thrust, but nothing came of it by January 1998. This rocket has even less available on it. In fact, there are only two known images I can find. One is in a compendium of nanosat launch vehicles made by NASA, and the other is from the website I think space.com or Parabolic Arc. It's so rare that the forum I found this image on doesn't even know what it is. This is the Whittinghill Aerospace Minimum Cost Launch Vehicle. George Whittinghill founded this company in 2004 to develop low-cost launch systems. His background includes McDonnell Douglas, NASA, AMROC, Space Industries, and others, including working as the CTO at Virgin Galactic. The team includes his son and five others. MCLV is a four-stage launch vehicle capable of putting 22.7 kilograms into low Earth orbit for about $2 million. Stage 4 is a solid kick motor for orbital insertion. Stage 3 is a single hybrid propulsion unit. Stage 2 is two hybrid propulsion units. And Stage 1 is four hybrid propulsion units. Like I said, details are scarce on the rocket. MCLV's first three stages would use a single unit, kind of like Conestoga using Castor 4 motors. This unit would use Knox rubber for propellant, much like the AMROC upper stages, and be 9 meters tall and 61 centimeters wide. Units would also use the nitrous oxide for liquid injection thrust vector control for steering. Whittinghill received NASA money in 2011 to use a single unit as a suborbital launch vehicle, but nothing came of it aside from one known engine firing. Since then, they've done some Spears work on an XS-1 upper stage concept and aided in the testing of a hybrid motor for a notional Mars sample return ascent vehicle. And that's it for Whittinghill. See? Not much. Hey, wait! That's Eagle! Interesting to see how my renders have improved. I think this is the Astra launch vehicle brought up when we talked about E-Prime Aerospace uh, way back when. Astra was a launch vehicle proposed by Morton Thiokol in about 1987 that was based around the Castor 120 motor, also known as the Peacekeeper First Stage. In developing this motor, Thiokol saw the opportunity to build a family of launch vehicles using the Castor 120 and other solids to help bridge a perceived launch gap. 
This launch family would use the Castor 120, a half-size Castor 120, Star 75 Saab motor, and Castor 2 boosters. Castor 120 is a 92-inch diameter Saab motor that weighs 116,993 pounds full and contains 107,914 pounds of propellant. As a first stage, it produces up to 440,000 pounds of thrust at a specific impulse of 280 seconds in vacuum. The half Castro 120 is unknown since it was never produced, but I could guess it's about half the weight of Castro 120 with a higher specific impulse due to being a vacuum stage. Star 75 was a 75-inch diameter motor, never produced by Thiokol, meant to be an upper stage for heavier uh, geostationary payloads. It would contain 16,542 pounds of propellant and weigh 17,783 pounds wet. The motor would operate with about 45,000 pounds of thrust and a specific impulse of 288 seconds. Castor 2 is an old solid booster used in the Delta and Scout family of launch vehicles. It contained 3,729 kilograms, wait, why am I using kilograms instead of pounds on this one? Don't ask me why, of propellant and weighed 4,424 kilograms wet. Thrust was 58,203 pounds with a specific impulse of 262 seconds in vacuum. Six vehicles were studied. Astra 1 is a simple stick. No boosters. Stages 1 and 2 are Castro 120s and a Star 75 third stage. 3,500 pounds to Leo and 1,345 to GTO. Astra 1A is Astra 1, but with five Castro 2 boosters. Five. Five. I don't get it either. 4,500 pounds to Leo, 1,730 to GTO, and 637 to Geo. Astra 2 has two Castor 120s for boosters, a single Castor 120 first and second stage, with a half 120 as the third. This was capable of 13,100 pounds to Leo, 5,040 to GTO, and 2,435 directly into Geo. Astra 3A has three Castor 120 boosters, one for the stages 1 and 2, and then a Star 75 third stage. 11,200 pounds to Leo, 4,300 to GTO, and 2,137 to Geo. Astra 3 is, as you guessed it, Astra 3A, but with a half castered 120 third stage instead of the Star 75. 15,500 pounds to Leo, 5,960 to GTO, and 2,975 to Geo. Astra 6 is, oh boy, six boosters, a single first and second stage, and the half 120 as the third. 22,000 pounds to Leo, 8,460 to GTO, and a split payload capacity for direct geostationary insertion, a single 3,814-pound satellite, or two 1,786-pound satellites. Dual manifest! Woo! Nothing else happened to this design based on my research. There's just this paper, which is focused on gauging customer interest. Uh, the paper mentions the ability to launch on demand, since this is an all-solid vehicle. Just stack it and go. Obviously, this was the end of it. Would any of these have worked? Eh. Eh. Yeah. Okay, Astra. Technically, yeah, it's an all-solid vehicle. Nothing too fancy on that front. Sure, the Star 75 required development, but that's not too extravagant. The Athena launch vehicle family followed the basic design path of Astra Run, and those flew. Astra's only issue is finding a place in the launch market. Whitting Hill's MCLV is an interesting concept. Making a robust assessment is challenging since there's no actual technical detail available. Conceptually, I see nothing wrong with the design. No one has built a Knox rubber hybrid launch vehicle, but I doubt there are insurmountable technical challenges. The only one I can think of is keeping the weight under control. A small lifter like that is going to be incredibly susceptible to weight growth, meaning that that payload capacity could vanish very easily. As a commercial Nanosat LV, that's where I think they'd struggle. The market for that kind of thing is virtually non-existent, except for maybe one specific launch once a year. That's an uneconomic proposition. Rideshare is where it's at these days. And then Pack Astro. A TRW-derived pressure-fed LOX kerosene engine has flown small satellites to space as the Falcon 1 second stage. The first stage is still unknown, but unlikely to have many issues. Designing a rocket with the SSO market in mind was a prescient decision. This LV is basically a pressure-fed aluminum version of Electron. Would it have survived the launch market of the 1990s? It's hard to say. Honestly, the biggest problem I have with this is that it was supposed to launch in Sweden. Come on, man. Really? There? 
And there you have it. Three rockets. Liquid, hybrid, and solid. No, that wasn't part of the plan, just so we're clear. Interesting concepts with not a lot of detail. Pack Astro, MCLV, and Astra. Those are rockets you know. <laughs>